and the fundamentals of what it means to have the present value of an uneven cash flow, or CF, which is the abbreviation for cash flow, and you'll see that a lot. <coughs> um, so, so yeah, that's basically that. That's taking uh, that's taking all these future values, bringing them back to the present. How much is it worth today? Um, another kind of spin on this is we can kind of find out the future value as well. Um, and obviously this is all mathematically. We'll get to the calculator soon because that obviously makes life a lot easier. Um, but let's just um, let's actually scroll here. Maybe you've got all that. Um, let's scroll over here and we'll draw ourselves another timeline. Um, one, two, three, four, okay. Um, let's just draw ourselves another timeline here. And, you know, let's put in some real numbers so we can kind of, uh, you know, plug this into the financial calculator. And also, let's try and incorporate not just numbers this time, but <coughs> calculating the future value. Um, so, let's do 10, 20, 25 and 35, right? So we're asking ourselves what is the future value of this uneven cash flow? Why is it uneven? Well because all the payments are not the same, uh, so that's why it's uneven. Um, it is still a cash flow because all this cash is flowing uh, towards some point, uh, but it's uneven, not like an annuity, similar to what we saw above. So what's the future value? So as we saw, um, the idea is is that with present value what we need to do is we need to know that all the money is in the same time period so we kind of take the values and we snap them back to the present and then we're really comparing apples with apples that's the idea of time value of money we don't want to be comparing apples and oranges you know 10 after one year is not the same as 10 after two years it's certainly not the same as 20 after two years i mean it's not only a different time period but it's a different amount of money um so how do we compare apples with apples well we kind of we get all the money into the same time period so when we're asking you about what the future value of an uneven cash flow is all we need to do is like we did with the present values where we took all of the values and we snapped them back to the present to say, well, how could we possibly just add X, Y, and Z together? It's not comparing apples with apples. X after one year is different to, it's even different to X after two years, but it's definitely different to Y after two years, and it's even more different to Z after three years. So what do we need to do? We need to get everything in the same time period. So what is the future value uh, <clears throat> of this uneven cash flow? Well, like we did with the present value, all we need to do is we need to take we need to take all the values and we need to snap them to the future. We snap you know that to the future and we snap this to the future and we just continue in that fashion um until well, you know, this is already at the end of the timeline. This doesn't really need to snap anywhere, it's already here. Um so the idea over here is that we're looking for a future value. So let's go to our future value formula and just have a look. Um, these are all present values times 1 plus i to the n. Um, so we're kind of going to use that. Um, what we need to do is we need to take... Here we go. Future value equals... Well, 10. The way that we're going to we're going we're gonna to view this is because we're going to basically say instead of... 0 is always today. But what we want to do is we want to kind of take this time machine out to year one, right, and ask ourselves, well, how much is it going to be worth in four years? And then we're going to, once we've done that calculation, we're going to get back into our little time capsule again and go forward a year and have a look at this 20 and say, well, how much is this 20 going to be worth in two years? And so on and so forth for the 25 and the 35, well, we're going to get there and get into our time capsule and say, how much is this 35 worth? Well today so we don't really need to go anywhere it's 35 bucks that's just going to stay the same um, really calculating the future values here so as we go forward the time period that you're in represents the present so all of a sudden these when we're, t when we're looking at it in terms of what's the future value of these these become the present values and we're asking ourselves how much is this worth when we snap it all the way to the end so this becomes today hypothetically because we're taking this time machine into the future and we're saying well 
let's just say that today, you know, is year one, um, how much is this ten dollars going to be worth at the end of this period? So we're going to have to snap it forward one, two, three. We're going to have to snap that forward two, and this forward one, and this one's already there. So the future value over here equals ten multiplied by one plus. Well, let's give an interest rate now, so we can be a little numerical. Let's say ten percent. Um, one plus ten percent. That's one hundred and ten percent, or one point one. Um, you know. <coughs> Don't forget to lose the percentages. And we need to compound that, obviously, because we're taking everything ahead. We want to know the future values. So we need to compound that one, two, three times. We need to compound it three times. Now we're going to add 20. We've taken our time capsule forward. 20 is our present value. And what we want to do is we want to compound it one, two times. So that's going to be 1 plus 10% to the 2 plus... 25 times 1 plus 10 percent, and you guessed it, it's going to be 1 because we're only taking it forward one period. And then we're going to add 35 because we get to the end of the time period. Well, 35 is essentially, you know, already in the present when we get to the future. I know it's all a little bit, uh, you know, like, uh, it's all a little bit like uh, Back to the Future. Um, but as long as you can understand that, then that will all work out. Now, obviously, in class we hope that this isn't really an algebra class, so you can actually put this into your calculator, and you will calculate the future value um, of this cash flow. But the much easier way to do it is to recognize that if this 1 plus 10% to the n, and then this 1 plus 10% percent to the n minus 1 and 1 plus n, and 1 plus 10 percent to the n minus 2 it's kind of repetitive so we have the financial calculator which takes control for us um, it's very very easy all we need to do over here sorry um, all we need to do over here is we need to set up a cash flow now it's different on every on every financial calculator over here we can see obviously that there's you know zero as a present value um, <coughs> The way that we do this, we calculate the net present value, NPV. Um, I guess we'll just write that down, net present value. And the idea of the net present value it is it is the net, which is the addition of all the present values. Um, uh, actually, I've just decided, you know what, we're going to do net present value. Uh, in the next video, so let me <coughs> let me just get rid of that for now. Um, let's just focus on finishing off this cash flow problem. Um, again, recognizing this, by the way, the present value would be calculating the present value would be adding all these together and calculating it here. But as far as this problem goes, <coughs> we can just finish off simply by either throwing this all into the calculator and calculating what the future value of this cash flow is, or if you recognize. Um, but there is a lot of repetition here. All you'd need to do is you'd need to go to your financial calculator and you would plug in <coughs> sorry, you'd plug in ten as the present value and you'd plug in ten percent as the i, and then you would see how many years you need to compound it for. PMT, well there's no PMT here because what you're really doing is you're kind of ignoring what's going on in the middle here and looking at each payment individually and compounding it to the end. And then what you do is you would add them all together. So this over here, this calculation, is PV is 10. Um, there's no PMT involved here. Uh, future value is what we're solving for. N is 3 years, because we're taking it forward 3 years. And I is just uh, 10, as we said. And you calculate what the future value is. And you would do the same for this, <coughs> except the present value over here is 20. Um, I is still the same, so you can actually just leave that in the calculator because until you clear out the time value of money uh, register, it will hold the variables. Um, over here, n is 2 because you're only taking it forward 2 years, 20. And then this 25, uh, you know, again, and 35 doesn't need to be compounded because it's already there, it's already in that time period that we want to know. So the future value would, would be done in this way. Um, and that's it.